Hello, my name is Aniska and welcome to my channel. Now, because we've got Valentine's Day coming up, I thought I would talk today about loving your voice. And one of the things I hear more commonly than anything else with people I work with all over the world, male and female, is I hate my voice when I hear it. When I hear a recording, I can't stand it and I don't listen to my voice. I hear this all the time. When I work with clients, I always give them a recording of the session and invariably they don't listen to it because they don't like to listen to their voice. And it always makes me feel really sad because I think this is a part of you. This is, you know, your voice. So I want to talk a little bit more about this topic today and really about embracing and loving your voice. And also I want to talk a little bit more about some of the psychology that I use with my clients as well around the voice and also some of the reasons why you might not like what you hear. So the first thing I wanna say before I sort of get into anything else is that the voice that you hear in your head is not what anyone else hears and it's the same for us all. And there's good reason for this. And so often when clients hear their voice on a recording and they don't normally listen to a recording, they'll be like, do I really sound like that? And it's, it's that they're so shocked because they're not used to hearing their voice. Now, the reason being is when we hear our voice in our head, we are hearing the conduction through the bones of the skull. Primarily, there is also some air conduction as well. When we're hearing it on a recording, we're only hearing it through air conduction. Now, this is really important because when we are hearing our voice through the sort of bone conduction, it actually lowers the frequencies in our voice. And so what we then perceive in our own head often is a lower, richer voice. And then when we hear a recording, it will sound probably higher and thinner. And we're like, that's not the voice I want. That's not the voice I'm hearing. And then it gets, you know, it can cause a lot of anxiety for people. And so they think I'm just not going to listen to my voice and then I can just not think about this. So I invite you, and this is what I get my clients to do, whether they do it or not, is another matter because I'm not at home with them. But what I invite them to do all the time is listen to your voice regularly. Listen to recordings of your voice and start to normalize what you sound like to everyone else versus, you know, pushing it away, resisting it, because what we resist persists. And then when you are forced to listen to your voice, it's a real shock. But if you're listening to it all the time anyway, it will be less of a shock. And hopefully you can bring a little bit more compassion to this is my voice. This is what I sound like. So I do invite you just listen to your voice as much as you can and try not to bring that kind of judgment to it. Just um, just listen to it. And then I think, you know, if you are someone that's say preparing for a presentation or an important meeting or a keynote speech, then when you are listening back to your recording, when you're practicing, you can then really focus on the content and, and perhaps the sort of the expression versus, oh my God, I hate the sound of my voice. And so often we tend to just focus on what we hate. So that's my first tip for you. Please just start to listen to your voice and bring some compassion to what you're hearing. Now, secondly, I mentioned this um, a moment ago is around the sort of psychology of our voice. And this is a big part of my work with clients. And I think what also makes what I do quite unique. So I'm a Jungian life coach as well as a experienced voice coach and teacher. And so I bring a lot of Jung's concepts around the psyche into my work. Now, one such concept is the persona, which is this mask or this face we show in the world. And we all have personas and we have different personas for different things in our life. We, we show up differently in different things, you know, different persona with family, different persona with our boss, different persona with our pets, et cetera, et cetera. So we all have that, but our voice also forms part of our persona. How we use our voice isn't random. And, you know, there are some, obviously some um, elements of where we grow up, we're going to adopt the accent of those people around us. That's pretty common for us all, but there's also much deeper things at play as well. And so often when we're hearing our voice on a recording, we are perhaps not conscious of this, but unconsciously we're starting to hear 
this persona and we're like, mm, but, but that's not really who I am. So we might take on the persona, for example, if we are conflict averse, if we are a real people pleaser and we don't like to create waves in our life, we might take on the persona, which includes the voice of a nice, sweet, gentle voice. But actually there's a part of us, and I work with many women on this, a part of us that actually wants to be more assertive and be more authoritative and be more powerful in the workplace. But there is this inner conflict because you can't be both. So you have to choose and, and the ego always wins and it will pick the thing that it thinks is gonna keep you safe. So then they have this conflict because the voice is expressing one thing, but internally they're like, mm, yeah, but I, I want to become, you know, super, super successful and run a, a business and I want people to take me seriously and listen to me. So there's this inner conflict and it shows up in our voice. Now, persona literally translates as through sound, which I think is absolutely fascinating. So one of the things that we have to start to do, and one of the things I help clients really work with, is letting go of that kind of duality and really starting to integrate both sides of the coin. Um, it could also show up, for example, if you are someone who is perhaps wanting to be really taken seriously and noticed and you know you want to be perceived as someone that's not to be messed with, you might have a very loud, aggressive voice and actually then having more of a gentle, soft, vulnerable voice is in your shadow, is something that's very uncomfortable to you. So it's kind of like, there's this one voice and then I can't be anything else. But our true voice really allows us to access all the colors, if we are an artist, all the colors of the palette, all the dynamics, the pitch, the intensity, all of that, all of that. So you can choose how your voice shows up in a particular situation. You might want to be loud and aggressive one minute, you might want to be soft and gentle another, but your voice isn't limited by this unconscious part of you that's like, no, nope, that is not safe. You can't do that because people will walk all over you or, or they might criticize you, et cetera, et cetera. So often then, as I say, when we're hearing our voice on a recording, unconsciously, we are picking up that this isn't really who I am because it's not who you really are because we're all wearing these masks. And when we start to actually integrate these two sides of ourselves, then we can show up more authentically, which includes how we use our voice. And then finally, and I suppose in a more practical way, we have to take care of our voice. And I say this all the time to people, you know, it's like the voice is a muscle or many muscles actually How you know, voice production involves many muscles, but we say very simply, it's a muscle. Much like when you go to the gym, if you want a strong, healthy, flexible body, you have to work out in whatever workout you do. You can't just sit on the sofa and have a strong, healthy, flexible body. And it's the same with the voice. We have to take care of our voice if we want it to last and to take care of us. So loving our voice also means looking after our voice. So that could look like warming up your voice before a full day of speaking. It could look like giving yourself vocal naps throughout the day and even scheduling them in. And that means no talking to anyone, no whispering, no nothing. It could also be drinking lots of water. And it could also be something like steaming your voice. I've got like a little personal steam inhalation device. And uh, last week before my, my shows in London, I was sitting in front of the TV, like steaming my voice. And the voice loves moisture. It loves to be hydrated. And so I say to people often, you know, if you don't have any other time to warm up your voice, do it in the shower in the morning because of all the steam. So there are my three ideas for you to think of. I suppose we've got the physical, uh, the physical kind of warm ups and the physical side of it. We've got the sort of psychological side of it. And then just a little bit more of the sort of science around why we might perceive our voice to be different to what it actually sounds like. So I hope that that's really helped and given you some food for thought. And I'd love to know your comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please do like, share and subscribe. And I will see you on my next video and happy Valentine's Day.